Henry Jones, come on up. Henry, is it good to be back in St. Louis? Always, yes. You had great days here at St. Louis U High, and why don't we just get to it right off the top and tell, tell you about your life and experiences with Coach Martell. Oh, um, Coach Martell was awesome. Um, I, I, you know what, I don't remember a lot of you yelling and screaming back in those days. Or uh, He was never really that hard on us. I think Dan Isom can contrib uh, attribute to that. But uh, just, a, I mean, I just remember him being such a great guy, a great coach, uh, just passionate about what he did. And uh, he loved his players, obviously. And uh, I, just, I just have great memories of Coach Martell back in those days. Well, then you went on from here to Illinois, and uh, you had a pretty good career in the Big Ten. Yeah, you, Illinois was a, a lot of fun. I met a lot of great guys there. Um, and it started off kind of rough. We, had, we didn't have great success for my first couple of years there. But uh, when my class, when we became uh, sophomores, uh, we went to a bowl game. I think we were like uh, seven and six, I think our record was. And then my junior and senior years, we really had some good football teams. Uh, we, we beat the, the number one team in the country at that time. It was University of Colorado. We went on the road, beat USC my junior year in, in the Coliseum. Uh, that was a great game. It was on a Monday night, actually on a Labor Day night. One of my great memories there, I had an interception that game. Uh, they had a lot of great players that went on to play in the NFL, and we had a lot of great players, and that was a, that was a really special moment there. But uh, uh, we beat Ohio State three, of, uh, matter of fact, three of my four years there. Uh, so we had some good teams there. I mean, we had, we had a good time. You know, folks, uh, here in St. Louis, we don't hear of many St. Louis football players being highly drafted. We have a few more today than we didn't used to. But uh, this man was a first-rounder in uh, 1991 in, in a modern era by the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was an interesting time. Um, getting drafted by Buffalo was special now. Uh, they had just came off a Super Bowl where they lost um, by a kick against the New York Giants, the right. wide right kick. And I was watching that game in college. So um, I, uh, my agent told me that I had an opportunity to go to Buffalo. I was like, okay. So uh, draft day comes along and I get another phone call. And it's my agent said, Buffalo really likes you. So B Buffalo's pick comes up, it's a 26 pick and they pick me. So I'm like, that's awesome. You know, I'm a first round draft pick. That's great. I'm going to Buffalo. They're coming off a Super Bowl. You know, we're going to think we, can go. we got an opportunity to go again because they got a lot of great players. Now, when I say great players, I didn't know they had, I mean, they had superstar players, Hall of Fame players, Hall of Fame coaches, and a lot of big egos. I mean, it was a very interesting experience my first year there. It was an eye opener. By the way, we haven't mentioned uh, Henry played safety. So that was the position he held. 19, a year later, his second season, you go to the Pro Bowl. He led the NFL with uh, eight picks. How about 263 return yards? That's a big number on those eight uh, interceptions. And uh, that really took your career off. Yeah, um, my rookie year was interesting because I had kind of an interesting contract situation. Um, they didn't really want to pay me what I, well, <laughs> now that, <laughs> I'm not talking about my worth. Well, all I'm talking about was the market rate at that time. You know, I just wanted to be slotted between the 24th uh, and the 20. I mean, 25th and the 27th pick. You know, that's kind of what we were going for. But at that time, Bill Polian was the uh, the general manager. He was a real hard nosed negotiator. So, in long story short, I'm, I had to. I sat out the whole training camp. I didn't get the training camp until the first week before the very first game. So I missed a month of training. So I'm way behind at that point. Um, so the first game is against the Miami Dolphins down in Miami. So they uh, get a crash course in special teams because they wanted, you know, as a first round pick, you got to come in and you got to contribute, you know. So they, uh, they threw me in on three special teams, kickoff, punt, return, and uh, kick, uh, kickoff return. So I, I go down and I make a couple of tackles on kickoff, and the special team coach is Bruce DeHaven, who's now at the uh, Carolina Panthers. He said, Henry, that was a great game, man. We're really proud of you, and we, you know, we're really happy. Just keep up, keep up the good work and keep working hard, and things will be all right. So I did that. I played a lot of special teams my refreshman uh, rookie year, and then they worked me in on defense, and then eventually I was able to start 
uh, my second year in the league, absolutely. How many AFC championships? Uh, they went to four, and I played, you went to three. I played in three so AFC you played, championships. So you played in three, yep, three Super, Super Bowls. Bowls? Three Super Bowls. Three Super Bowls right here. He's got a big old ring, folks. <laughs> Let me tell you, he's, he, I need some sunglasses up here. He's got some diamonds on. He played with Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and maybe the, maybe the best defensive, I guess, end in the history of the game at Bruce Smith. Yes, I mean, again... Going into that situation was interesting. I mean, I'm like, man, these guys are really good. I got to really pick my game up. I'll never forget one, one practice. Um, I can't remember what year it was, but it was just a typical practice, you know. And it, 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 at those times, the offense, when the offense is out there, the defense is sitting around on the bench. We're not doing anything. We have a, a, a scout team. So then when the defense is out there, the offense is sitting around kind of just hanging out. So. I come off the field from our defensive period, get some water, and Jim Kelly looks up at me. He said, he said, man, you think you can play in this league? You know, I'm cocky at this point. <laughs> I'm like, if you can, I can. So, <laughs> so I'm like, these guys, you know, they, we have some special, uh, some special players and special teams. How about playing for Coach Marv Levy? Yeah. Um, and you know Marv is a St. Louis in two, by the way. Yeah, Marv, is a spe he's a special guy. Um, he's not a real rah-rah coach. He's not a real uh, yeller and scream. He's real cerebral. Every day he comes in with uh, quotes, Churchill, uh, Nietzsche, whoever it may be that day. He, he's going to give us a quote, a story, uh, Battle of the Bulls, whatever it may be, uh, some kind of inspirational story. You're seriously. And, uh, a lot of the guys are kind of looking at each other like, what's Marv talking about? But... <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, we have a lot of respect for Marv. Obviously, he's a Hall of Fame coach, did a great job, and I have a, a lot of respect for him. I love Marv. Some cold days in Buffalo? Yeah, Buffalo's, <laughs> Buffalo's intense with the winters now. <laughs> I have, uh, unbelievable. I mean, my wife can attest. I mean, it will snow and snow and snow and snow. We walk, I walked out my house one day, and the snow is piled up taller than the house. So no <laughs> kidding. Cars get covered by the plows with snow. Uh, one game, I'll tell you about, uh, I think we were playing the Patriots. I can't remember the year, in the uh, mid-90s. And it's sleeting sideways. Sleeting now. <laughs> I wake up, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I say sleeting sideways, I mean literally, the sleep is just constantly. So I'm, I'm like, I hope, it's, hope this stops before one o'clock kickoff. So we get to the stadium, it's still sleeting, right? I'm like, oh no. So then we're in warm-ups, it's sleeting. I mean, the sleet is hitting you in the eyes, you can hardly see. When I tell you it sleeted for three straight hours during that football game, by the time I got home, I, my eyes were so red, I could hardly see. But that's, that's the kind of winners we have in Buffalo. What, uh, who are the toughest guys to defend, the toughest receivers for you? Who, who stands out to? Uh... Oh man, we had, you know, there were a lot of great players uh, back in those days. Uh, do you guys remember Mark Clayton and Mark sure. Duper from Miami with Dan Marino? Those guys were really special, and that was a good group of guys. Michael Irvin was really good with those Dallas Cowboys teams that we played in a couple of Super Bowls. Um, Irving Fryer, I don't know if you guys remember Irving Fryer. Went to Nebraska, played for the Patriots for a long time. Really, really good receiver. Uh, so, I mean, there were a lot of good guys at that time, and just a lot of competition. What was the biggest interception you made? Most important. Most important? Uh, probably have to be the inner, oh, um, the two that stick out to me the most. I got to go with two. Uh, we played Kansas City in the AFC Championship game. Joe Montana was ending his career uh, with Kansas City, and they were driving on us. We had, a, we had a lead, but they were driving. They were coming back a little bit. So he tries to hit the fullback out of the backfield. And I see, I, I see the play developing because I knew what play was going to be. He's going to run an angle route. He's going to come out and cut across. And Joe, I, I read it the whole way. And he threw it. The ball was coming right to Kimball Andrews. I remember the guy's name, Kimball Andrews. And the ball hit him in his, right in his hand. As soon as he hit his hands, Cornelius Bennett came and popped him. And the ball popped. And I was coming and just picked it off, came right to me. So that was one of my uh, a great memory there. And, then and also, you won the game. And we won that game, 38-3. to We went to the Super Bowl. And then the, very, uh, the next year, or the year before, I can't remember, we played Houston in a game. Uh, we were down, 
I don't know, you guys might remember this one. We were down 38 to three at halftime. We had the famous comeback game. And we're all like on the sidelines, like planning the off season, you know. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, are you kidding me? So anyway, it's 30, well, look, it was 30, I want to say it was 31 to three at halftime. We come out, very first play, our backup quarterback, because Jim Kelly was injured at the game, in the game, through an interception. The guy runs it back for a touchdown, 38 to three. And that was really like, seriously. So <laughs> we had Cornelius Bennett out, uh, Jim Kelly was out. We had a bunch of players out that game. But then things just started happening, and Houston just got complacent, and the big momentum just started. And all of a sudden, we're back in the football game. Long story short, it's, it goes to overtime. And uh, Warren Moon drops back to pass. Whatever reason, he overthrows his receiver right to my arms. I, I run it back about 25 yards, and we were able to kick a field goal and win that football game. Was it 41-38 final? It I think they only final. scored three points in the yeah. second half. Yeah, yeah look that one up and watch it. It was the biggest comeback, the biggest comeback. in the history of the National Football League in a playoff game. Henry, uh, again, it's great to have you here. Uh, you got some people that you want to... Absolutely. Introduce. I want to absolutely want to introduce, first of all, my mother, who. <laughs> my, my mom is really an inspiration to be a civil servant. For, she's been a nurse in St. Louis for over 50 years. 50 years. Worked at, worked at City Hospital, Homer G. Phillips. Just a overall servant of God. Uh, today's her 80th birthday. I want to wish her happy hey. birthday. <laughs> Just a, a fan, fantastic servant of the, the living God. I, she yeah, and Henry's only 26. <laughs> exactly. I graduated two years ago at SLU. But <laughs> she inspires me. And I, my, my wife, special Joanna Jones, my wife, inspires me every day. She's really the most talented one in the house with her energy, her love of life. We look up to her, and she's very passionate. I love her very much. We've been married 17 years. Thank you. And I want to introduce, I want to, introduce you, uh, to my daughter, Jasmine. Jasmine, stand up. Now, yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine is a national champion hurdler in the 100-meter hurdle. She won the national championship wow. last year. She's 14 years old. Really, I'm sorry. She won two national championships. She won the 200 meter hurdles and the 100 meter hurdles. Uh, we have my daughter Jada. She's a state champion in the 100 meter dash, 400, and the four by one. Oh, I can't forget my sister, Marsha Davenport. My brother-in-law Michael. My cousin Dan. My cousin Kim, my cousin Miles, and my cousin Lance, who's in the Navy. I also want to give a special shout out to uh, Dan Isom and his family. Dan played with me at SLU. Um, Dan played with me at SLU. He was a, a safety when I was a cornerback and uh, really a good friend and really an inspiration to me as well. Rose to be the police chief of St. Louis at one point. Yeah, I'm really happy about that and proud of that. And his wife, Jenny, and his son, Dan, who's going to Northern Illinois on a football scholarship as well. Okay, so Henry, I think you got enough out here that maybe you'll be on easy street the rest of the way. <laughs> These kids can take care of you. Yep. But listen, it's great to have you and your family here and uh, an honor to have a member of the National Football League from our town uh, be inducted. So congratulations this day. You're enshrined into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be honored by my hometown. Absolutely.